Welcome back to This Week in Space. I'm Miles O'Brien, and I don't need no stinking network. I've got SpaceFlightNow.com, the premier place for space on the web. We're glad you're with us, wherever you are and however you found us. Now, a quick word on how we're doing all this. It may look like I'm on the bridge of the Starship Enterprise or something, but really, I'm just sitting in front of a green screen in my tiny little office in New York. My colleague, David Waters, he's in Florida, but he controls where I appear to be. So I better be nice to him or I might end up here. Or here. Or, or here. Beam me out of here, David, please. Now, Kate Tobin is in Atlanta. I've worked with her since the early 90s, and she is always running a tight editorial ship, as she is this moment. And the jet-setting founder of SpaceFlightNow.com is Stephen Young. He's in the UK at the moment, a little past tea time, but is based in Florida normally. Don't worry, he has a green guard, people. The hangar door is sealed tight once again in Burt Rutan's shop in Mojave, California. Scaled composites and the team focused on the nitty-gritty details of getting Spaceship Two ready to carry some paying passengers to space in the next few years. Now, if they fly like they put on a show, Virgin Galactic is bound to dazzle. About 500 would-be flyers, politicians, and VIPs were there on December 7th, a day that will live in infamy, for the rollout of Spaceship Two. Richard Branson says his ship nearly brought him to tears. After the rollout, a fluke storm came barreling into Mojave. The revelers had to beat a hasty retreat and some high winds tore the elaborate tent to shreds. That'd bring tears. Fortunately, Spaceship Two and her mothership, White Knight Two, were safely tucked in their hangar. I don't believe in omens, do you? Three, two, one. We have ignition and liftoff of a Delta II rocket and wise. Oh, a wise guy, eh? Somewhere up there, Curly Howard is nyuck, nyuck, nyucking over this one. NASA's Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, or WISE, spacecraft, left the pad at Vandenberg Air Force Base, is now on its way to scan the heavens in unprecedented ways. NASA hopes WISE will orbit the Earth from pole to pole for about 10 months, snapping millions of infrared images, casting a wide net for cool things. And I mean that literally, like brown dwarfs and near-Earth asteroids or comets, which are hard for us to see otherwise and could clonk us. And the Benjamin Button of space telescopes, the old young man Hubble, is wowing us once again, this time going back, 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 further in time than ever. Astronomers trained the new Wide Field Camera 3 on the same patch of sky where Hubble captured the famous ultra-deep field image in 2004. You remember that one. Well, the new image took 173 seconds of exposure time over four days and reveals the oldest galaxies ever imaged, only 600 to 900 million years after the Big Bang. Now that's a time exposure in more ways than one. Well, I sure hope you watched the last shuttle landing with us on spaceflightnow.com. If you did, you saw a bit of history. It was the last shuttle ride to or from the space station for a station crew member. Nicole Stott is just back from a three-month tour of duty there. David Waters checked in to see how gravity is treating her. Well, Nicole, thanks very much for joining us. How is gravity treating you? How are you feeling now? Gravity's been great. You know, the, the first couple days were a little wobbly, but uh, I think I've been pretty fortunate to get back to 100% very quickly. Um, and the guys in the gym are working me out like crazy to make that happen. So uh, I feel good. I feel really good. Now, it's been kind of crowded up there. In the past uh, you know, year, we've had an expansion of the crew going up to now a full-time crew, a larger crew. What is that like going up to that, and what percentage of the time do you think you were working on science versus station operations? Uh, you know, it, it was six-person crew was, was really good. The, you know, the station is uh, a huge place now. And, and, you know, unlike here on Earth where you just get to kind of walk around on your floor, you get the whole volume of the station to work in. And so um, six people up there was really, really comfortable. And even when we had shuttle crews there where you had, you know, 12, 13 people, um, 
very comfortable place. So, uh, so that's been going great. And I would say that I spent um, on science easily, um, you know, 50 to 60 percent of my time in a day would be spent on some aspect of a research or a science activity. Let's talk about that science. Why is that science so important? And why should uh, people back here on Earth care about it? And maybe name one of your most interesting experiments, you think? Well, I think, uh, you know, in terms of the science, uh, there's an aspect of it that is just, you know, that is purely kind of an exploration thing. What can we do in microgravity that we can't do here on the planet? How can we uh, refine processes? Uh, and some of that, uh, you know, it always comes back to um, things like protein crystal growth and how flames and uh, fuels work in space versus here on the ground. And are, are there ways that we can uh, improve the processes that we have here on the planet to improve things here for ourselves, as well as, uh, you know, future exploration of space? And I think what we're doing on the, the space station right now supports both of those. Um, we, we are learning things about how to go um, further away from our planet by the science that's going on on station. And we're also at the same time making things better here. Um, you know, I think for me, one of the, the really interesting experiments that was up there was, uh, and it's going to seem really simple, but it's the, the JAXA guys, the Japanese uh, agency had a, a plant growth experiment. And, um, you know, I think there's interesting things about the way uh, plants grow in space versus on the ground, and they're, they're learning about that. Uh, it gave us the chance to harvest um, um, some little flowers while I was up there. And it's just interesting to, to me to see how something that can seem so simple can be giving scientists so much information about how to harvest uh, crops and plants on the ground, as well as uh, allowing us to develop methods for uh, doing that for longer duration space flight. Astronaut Nicole Stott, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. You think Muhammad Ali could float like a butterfly? Well, wait till you see some butterflies who can float like an astronaut. These monarchs and painted ladies launched as caterpillars and emerged from their pupa stage aboard the International Space Station. They're beautiful butterflies. They're the first adult butterflies to have flown in space, as a matter of fact. Clearly, they were confused and didn't know which way was up, as I might have hypothesized. More than 170,000 K through 12 students are following the butterflies' exploits. And guess what? You can too. You can follow their adventures on Twitter. Their handle is Butterfly Space. Oh, and speaking of Twitter, that's a good way to reach us. Let us know what you like and what you don't about this week in space. You can follow us on Twitter at Get this, we're brilliant, This Week in Space. And you can email us at twist, that's T-W-I-S, This Week in Space, at spaceflightnow.com. Stay in touch, let us know what you want to see. We aim to please, and we aim to fill the gap. That's the mainstream media space coverage gap. That other gap, well, that's above our pay grade. But we hope our efforts to carry the fire will get us to a new and exciting chapter for space exploration. Next time on This Week in Space, we'll take you to a place called McMoons. Believe it or not, the old McDonald's at the NASA Ames Research Center has become the scene of a remarkable project to preserve and enhance some 50-year-old pictures of the moon. We'll tell you the amazing tale of the lost tapes, jury-rigged antique machines, and some guys with a lot of drive and passion. The only question that remains, would you like a hot apple pie with that? Thanks for watching. I'm Miles O'Brien.